in Asia Pacific. Uh, Sagan Sawney, who uh, heads up our team in India. Hui Fong Chi, who is the head of our retail arm in Asia Pacific. And Sabi, <laughs> uh, who is based in our operations here in Mumbai. Uh, it would be good, perhaps, before we started, if each of, uh, of you could just give us a very quick introduction to yourself and to what your company is and uh, your position within that so that we know and understand the people present. Uh, so perhaps if we start uh, with you. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Dr. Sweeney, basically an academician, but I also do a couple of consulting and consulting. I'm Ramakrishnan, a director of facility pharmacy in Sweeney of Pharmacy. Very good. I'm Radha Krishnan, director of facility pharmacy. Same. Thank you. Harish Mehta, a business coach, helping retail grow in India. Bajan Barucha, president. Bombay store, chain of lifestyle stores. Okay. Nayan Safiya, uh, IT hair in total sports and fitness. It's a sports and fitness company. Terrific. Jitain Cheda, director of total sports and fitness. We're a chain of four retail stores, six stores in Mumbai. Okay. Koshi Chadin, I'm the regional business manager for Titan. I wear, we have 80 stores in West uh, and uh, we take care of 80 stores. Hi, Burgess Mukherjee here from Largely Yours. We are a plus size garment store change. Hi, I'm Mangesh More. I'm from Titan Company Limited and takes care of a retail business in Mumbai. Hi, uh, Naveen Baird. Uh, I'm also from Titan. I also look at uh, store operations. Hi, my name is Opi Gupta. I come from a retail uh, company named R uh, uh, Ritu Hello, oh, my name is Jitendra Sarukhe. I'm from Trent Limited, managing enterprise systems. Okay. I'm uh, Vinod Kapote. I'm the senior manager for IT at Trent Limited. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Anand Toma, again from Trent Limited. Uh, I look after IT infrastructure there. Yeah, hi, I'm Samir Aouja. I'm also from Trent. I look after in-store systems and PR. Hi, this is Yaur Sheikh. Uh, I work with Samir only with in Trent. Uh, handle the store systems. Hi, I am Saranj. I also look after customer experience and I work for Titan Company Limited. Hi, my name is Vinil and I'm from Niranjan Paints. I'm the third generation. Uh, we run a paint store in Mumbai. Hi, my name is Chetan Port. Uh, I'm in my manager IT in Ishanam of Pune. My name is uh, Arun. I'm from Prakash Retail Private Limited. Uh, we are into retail. Nasir Ahmad from Prakash Retail. Okay. Sita Raman from Prakash Retail Karnataka, consumer durable retailers. Uh, we look of, I look after IT, consulting IT. Okay, well, thank you very much for your introductions. Uh, good to have you all here. Uh, could I just ask who was present in uh, the address that I gave a little earlier? on the subject of developing effective uh, loss prevention roadmap in an omni-channel environment. Only a couple. Okay. Uh, it might be worth, if, if you couple that were there don't mind, that we just recap a little bit on, on what we spoke about there uh, for, for those that weren't present. And... Uh, 
we'll uh, just skip through that uh, very quickly. Um, just very quickly for those that don't know, Micros operates in three verticals, um, retail, food and beverage, and the hospitality industry. So hotels, restaurants, fast food, retailers, casinos, theme parks, cruise ships, those are all of the areas where we operate and we have a suite of analytical products for uh, fraud detection, loss prevention if you like, that operate across all of those verticals. Um, the shrink factor, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, uh, the amount of losses uh, due to theft or, or other reasons that occur, um, is very high in India based on the statistics that are available and uh, probably around about a full percentage point higher on average in India than almost anywhere else in the world. And if we look at that and where, how employees steal, we actually find that the biggest part of theft or loss in retail is around employee theft at, a, at around 41%. Against that, shoplifting and other retail crime only makes up 33%. If we add to that 40%, the 15.3% in the administration, which is taking in things like non-compliance by employees, lack of training and other things that contribute to losses, we actually find that in total uh, employee-induced losses add up to well over 50% of all losses that occur. And consequently, that is the area where we need to direct our most effort if we want to be able to reduce those losses. And even though we're in an omni-channel world where we're dealing with uh, online and we're dealing with customer interaction in various ways, it doesn't alter the fact that the vast or, or the significant majority of our losses are around employee theft. So we need to concentrate on that first and then using the same analytic tools we can start to introduce some of those other things like online transactions paid for by a fraudulent credit card and then returned to one of your bricks and mortar stores. And this is a, a becoming an increasingly common occurrence. Uh, they purchased online, they paid for it with a stolen credit card, they then come into your store, return the item saying it was unsuitable or it was faulty or whatever the reason is, get a refund to another credit card uh, or cash if they can and, and then find out that the original card was in fact stolen. There is also some organised crime associated now with, with online retailing and our um, analytics can also detect some of that activity because we look at exceptions and trends and where you see certain things that are occurring that are above the norm, it starts to raise um, alerts and we can then delve further into that and see what's really happening. We are also expanded the, the area to, to things like inventory movements because employees are also involved there. So you have um, direct in to store deliveries coming in perhaps from a vendor. Uh, there's a number of things that can occur there. It could be that uh, the, the person receiving the goods is declaring a higher number than average of damaged goods. We need to look at are they really coming in damaged or are they being declared damaged and then used for another purpose. Missing shipments. 
is this store really having all these shipments missing or is there something else going on there? There may be collusion between the person receiving at the store on a direct in-store delivery and the vendor. Uh, so all of these things we can pick up by comparing store to store, operator to operator and seeing who stands out from the averages across all of your stores, all of your operators, who is it that's standing out and then we can look into that and find out what the reasons are behind it. When we look at theft, everybody thinks of shoplifting as a, as a major part of theft, and it is, but the actual value of items stole by shoplifting when you detect somebody and, and uh, recover those goods is quite small in comparison with the average value of what has been lost when you discover a dishonest employee. You can see in this instance it's almost seven times greater the average loss around employees as per the average loss around shoplifting. So again we see why we're wanting to concentrate on employees as the major source of shrink within the business. How do we see if our employees are honest? Well, 10% of your employees would never steal from you. That's all. Only 10% would never steal from you. And there's another 10% that would never do anything else than steal from you. They'll take every opportunity they possibly can and use any way they can to steal from you. But the other 80% are opti opportunistic. They're not really dishonest but they see an opportunity and they take it because you made it available. So the, the ones that we're primarily interested in are those 80%. We're never going to stop that guy at the 10% until we catch him and get rid of him. He's going to keep on trying. The 10% that would never steal from us, we obviously don't have to worry about. The other 80%, we've got to make sure that they don't see an opportunity to steal. Because if they see an opportunity because there's a weakness in your systems, and they may be by the first time it happens by accident, they think that was easy. The next time they repeat the procedure and find out that it is in fact easy and they will go on doing it. So eight out of ten employees decide to steal or not to steal based on your internal controls. And that's their basis for, for making that decision. If the controls are obviously there and they think they're going to get caught, they're not going to try and steal in the first place. If they think they're not going to get caught, well, they may well take the opportunity. And they could be stealing merchandise. And that's part of the issue. But the reality is that they can only take so much merchandise because it's not that easy to get rid of it in large quantities 